Next year, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Mad Hall with Midnight Harvest. Cool. That's the name. I'm Matt Hall. Thank you all for having me. Uh, anyway, I own and grow mushrooms. And no, not that kind of mushroom. That is the first thing I get asked every single time. I grow these kind of mushrooms. Currently growing about 40 to 50 pounds of shiitakes indoors in Interlock in Michigan. I sell them to local retails and restaurant shops throughout the area. And of course, when you grow mushrooms, somebody always gives you a little wink, a little nudge, and then they finally ask, can you grow morel mushrooms? And of course, you know, that's the big popular question here in Michigan, can you? Well, after about five years of research uh, in my lab, self-built, self-taught, self-studied, um, in December of 2018, we finally proved a little bit of the research true. And each one of these little pins you see over here are actually a morel that would have grown up to be full-blown edible, and this was in December. And then, of course, each one of these would have been a morel, which is really nice to think about, that there would have been over 30 to 40 in that one spot in my lab. Now, they didn't grow up too much, but we actually got in closer to see what they might be like otherwise, and finally identified the cup in the ridge area of the actual morel, so we could identify that, yeah, it wasn't just like a, a mistake done in the lab. And then we got even closer on one of them and identified a ridge a cap in a stalk relationship where we can actually see the whole mushroom in itself. Now this guy was tiny, was not able to cook. I tried, it was, didn't go very, very well. So I took my research farther to think like maybe it's a fluke, maybe it's gonna, you know, didn't happen the way it should have. And we took it to a Petri dish. And if you're familiar with Petri dishes, they're actually really tiny and we can't put too much inside of them. Well, we put, we put morel mushrooms inside of them. And this is our morels fruiting on a Petri dish. That light ring you see there, that is actually the scope, my microscope above the Petri dish. They were visible to the naked eye. The interesting part was that they were about five to six times larger than the ones before on a full media. And this one in the lower left was actually a different Petri dish. Three of our Petri dishes actually ended up fruiting morel mushrooms, uh, tiny little guys, of course. Now you're probably wondering, there's been some news lately over the past few years, there's another company growing morels, and how does my work compare? Well, the interesting part is, and this was actually done back in the 80s, and they're probably messing around that science, is that they're a two-stage process. I'm a one-stage, so I actually just have the recipe. We don't have to transfer anything. They have a premise of nutrient-poor. I have a premise of nutrient-rich. So I feel pretty confident, even though we haven't grown these morels to full edible size just yet, they will be absolutely delicious when we do. And of course, you're thinking, oh, that would be huge in Michigan. Massive, right? Like Trevor City, I've got my one little spot. Can you make that happen? Uh, the potential market for morel mushrooms is actually quite large. A 2007 study published by the USDA listed 28 countries that were found them highly prized in edible fungi. And more, they said more didn't participate in the study. So there's a, the world market would be absolutely massive if somebody could come along and create a morel mushroom indoors. Well, in the United States alone, your little spot's nice, but in these two states alone, in the spring of 2005, from January to June, they don't have frosts like we do, like we're about to, 700,000 pounds of morels came out of those two states in six months. So if you're thinking the value price that you've seen probably at the market, and take that to a yearly market, and then times it by a few more states, that's a pretty big market just here in the homeland, which is awesome. And so that's the code I'm trying to crack. And so essentially my path right now is that I've been doing this for over seven years in my home-built lab, and I'm gonna continue to grow. So the mushrooms farms are happening right now. I probably have to go home and harvest when I get done with this. And then after that, research and development. What I'm going on to next, we have 20 new morel trials currently happening. We have in the past eight, nine months of continued research since our first December success, we've made a lot of headway of what it means to grow a morel. And that's what it takes, is a lot of headway. And then, of course, investment and partnership. I'm definitely looking for the right partner, someone who I like, of course, you know, we can crack a beer. But investmentship, I will definitely talk equity and numbers tonight and or another time. And, of course, expand and scale. Indoor morel farms year-round across the United States.
Thank you. Questions other than how do you do it? <laughs> yes. Um, after I actually did study them for five years, and it was actually like a lot of mess ups. Um, you know, you put through a theory and put it through control methods, and then ultimately see what comes out the other end. Um, I actually um, I trained my success from I used to be a dolphin trainer with Disney uh, as an intern, and with dolphins you can't actually talk to them. They actually only understand hand signals and that tiny little whistle. If you ever been at a show, so you're communicating with something that you can't even talk to. It's no, much different than a morel or any mushroom. I mean, slightly different. I get it. <laughs> but uh, eventually, we uh, eventually I put through a theory, and you take the known phenomenon and the known like folklore, if you will, and you try and see if do they meld somewhere. And sure enough, they melded on this one really well. Yes. I have not. We are connected on LinkedIn. Um, I know Paul's work very well. I have three of his publications. I don't know how he wrote all those books studying funny mushrooms, um, but phenomenal mycologist. If anyone has a link to Paul, awesome. <laughs> Super. I'd love to meet him. Yes. How am I protected? Obviously, a wonderful question. Um, I fall under trade secret, and I have maintained that forever uh, due to the fact that China actually holds the market in mushrooms. Uh, more than 80 to 85% of the world's mushrooms come from China, and you know, I can't expect that the world would actually like, think to protect, you know, like, oh, let's look out for this little guy. Of course, they'd want to grow them, and so as long as I shut my mouth sometimes, which isn't very often, um, you know, then I'll be okay. Yes? Referring to the strain that I'm using? The similar strains, if you were familiar with the work back in the 80s, sounds like you might be, and that is Rufbrania, and that was a known strain that they were actually using, and you can actually develop, like, you can buy that commercially anywhere, most online, um, and that was the one. I've been in some contact with MSU and their microbiologist team um, about which ones to maybe use. This one was just a heads up, and sure enough, luckily it worked, and we were able to prove that. Yes, again. Mycorrhizal? No, I don't. I'm, uh, I'm self-taught, and it, as much as I say that, you know, I can do a lot of techniques, but I'm not actually, like, educationally taught. I only have an associate's in science and arts and never went on to a bachelor's, so all of my work has been in done whatever I can do with my lab, but I haven't gone to a professional formal lab. Although I really hope to buy a microscope one day. Yes? Uh, with all your problems, uh, how do you keep your morale up? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had to do it. Nice job. Love it. That's one I haven't heard. Usually it's your fun guy, and then I just walk away. <laughs> I got like a minute and a half. All right. Well, thank you all for your time. Okay, so this is not a surprise to everybody since you can see the live results, but we want to congratulate uh, Mr. Matthew Hall with Midnight Harvest. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so maybe we'll do one here and then we'll invite Sarah to come up and take a picture from the other side as well. This is Mr. Mike Rolla with RJG. Thank you.